Hello, everybody. Indeed, welcome to Men and Orange Mini Talk on Log Horizon 2. We are talking about episodes 10 and 11 on this recording. I'm Jero, joined by Fo Shizzle. Hey, what's up? And a couple of raid episodes to talk about. We'll start with episode 10, Guildmaster, which we had seen at the uh, the previous episodes that uh, the raid was not going well. They were in for a surprise when all three bosses had gathered in the same room. So everybody's kind of down and dejected, and they're thinking about not even trying to raid anymore, and... William is, uh, the uh, basically the, the entire episode is, you know, with William's perspective in mind of, you know, how he grew and how he got into the game and how he loved the game and that he was basically a pro gamer. And it, it, it's an episode overall looking at his character that maybe some people watching could relate to a little bit. I don't, I don't know if I can to the degree that he does, uh, that he is a, as a gamer, but uh, but what did you think about William this episode? He was just about the entire episode. Yeah, it was his, his perspective and everything, like how he got started in the game and how he, you know, found this, you know, I guess in real life he didn't have any friends, didn't talk to a lot of people, was kind of a loner, but jumped in the game much like Shiro, you know, and then became, mm-hmm. got a lot of these friends and came interested in the game and started talking to people and even the moment where he's talking about some guild raids he was in that he would get into these arguments with people he'd actually yell at people. I mean I've been in those situations where I had a guild yeah. leader uh, on vent when the guild was screwed up he would you know call people out on certain things and call you out and you know a lot of times people got their feelings hurt most of the time mm-hmm. and uh, he even says that too he did hurt some people's feelings but afterwards talked to them and I guess he learned how to interact with people and I guess it slowly helped him, but I'm not sure how much it helped him in the real life, real life stuff. But yeah, it was good mm-hmm. seeing him. His point of view, I was always curious about where he comes from. But I am, I'm a bit more curious about Demikos, to be honest with you. I want to see where, what you know, what he was like in the real world. But you know, maybe yeah. we see some of his eventually one day. Yeah, unfortunately, we won't be able to see talk any much of any about it in these two episodes that we're covering. But. Uh, it, it was also interesting to see William kind of tell, the uh, uh, speak of some of the regrets that he had, just of, of what we've seen in the show, sort of like turning away from the round table in, in Akihabara, and also his admiration toward the debauchery tea party, and then kind of wondering, you know, what went wrong or, or why they disbanded. Um, so... Besides, besides that, he, he basically rallies all the the guys, and you know, Shiro's over there. He wakes up, and then that's when Shiro takes his time to sort of plan the attack and plan what they're going to do. And that leads us into episode eleven, which is retry. Uh, you know, take another chance at the raid and figure out a strategy that works. And the way that they sort of work it is that they kind of have a, a strategy for taking down for taking on Luciette and then kind of moving all the pieces around so that you don't have all three bosses in the same location, but you have all of your raid members located within enough proximity to each other where you can cast spells and heal and stuff. And then Chiro has, has got it down has got the timing down on it just as much as he possibly can. He's constantly talking about the amount of seconds they have between move cooldowns and uh, and attacks and, and planning on when to beat the final boss. Yeah, it's interesting you're saying that. Yeah, they did give it another go, and it was, I was excited to see that. And I guess, like you said, the strategy was to keep the bosses somewhat close, but also separate at the same time that, you know, each of them would get down to a certain phase, and they would focus on another boss. So I guess they would divide the raid into, like, different little groups. And the tank rotations and everything was, was cool. I mean, that's a thing they do in MMOs, and certain bosses require multiple tanks on. So it's just nice seeing that more gamer stuff down in there. And like I said, Shiro, you know, I have all these windows open and staying focused and on every little thing. And there is one shot where, I guess close to the end, but we'll talk about that when we get there, a Demi-Cause kind of make doing something very surprising to everyone that they would never see coming. That... Mm-hmm. What he would do is uh, jump in and 
not really sacrifice himself because he didn't die. So, but he did do a selfless act, I would guess you would say. Yeah, and what he did was he grabbed Chire, and Chire was kind of like, you know, what the hell is, what the, what are you doing, what's going on? And then he kind of figured like, oh, maybe this isn't too bad. If I'm like a cannon on his back, I can make it work and kind of take out some of the the the, the shadow vanguard. Uh, but but then Demikos takes him to the door that leads into what we knew they they've been there for the whole time, which is just you know tons and tons of gold, just an entire room of just gold. And then we see the the guy that uh, uh, Kinjo from the from the Kuni clan uh, that we've seen before as uh, and and the raid's final boss. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, Uru. The final gold boss and. Before that, I mean, Demikos was kind of it was kind of cool just seeing him be this, I guess, heroic character for a little bit. Even though mm-hmm. I have a feeling that he's more like saving Shiro. You know, I don't want you to die in this fight, but it's probably something later on where he's like, well, I want to actually fight you for real and prove that I'm, you know, this good fighter. Which mm-hmm. I can see eventually being a thing later on where you know, Demikos needs to get over this, you know, I guess, or deal with Shiro and just get over it and move on. But yeah, he's probably saving that for a little bit later. So it's about, you know, I'm going to save you for now, but uh, you mm-hmm. need to die, it's going to be by me. I guess it's maybe it's the whole, like, uh, Goku, Vegeta thing, Dragon Ball Z, like, no one gets to beat you but me. That type of mentality between these two. But Yeah, it, I agree, because we saw, mostly in in episode 10, where William is, is speaking, that Demi Cost is kind of the, the second character of focus in that episode, and having heard so much of what William was saying and think about his experiences with Shire in the past that, you know, if, if those guys, if those experiences weren't able to sort of change his approach and be more willing to cooperate within the raid team, that I think that we, that Demikos is the kind of character that won't really ever change. He might have something that might be deemed an act of kindness but it's kind of like it's all with him it's just how does this benefit me yeah he has to help him out just to get to get what he wants but but yeah i mean we just see a shot of him it was kind of a flashback when he met this i guess i guess she's an npc or maybe a player that you know he's trashing his building she's like what are you gonna do next like you're gonna hit me like she wasn't really scared of me he was just kind of like how do i deal with this which i assume Mm -hmm. maybe that's his in-game wife maybe that's a shot of her but we'll see. But yeah, yeah Demikos, like you said, he's a very interesting character that I'm curious more to learn more about. Even though season one was just kind of like, oh, he's this brute character. He's held everyone yeah. captive. No one gives a crap about him. But now he's kind of been more involved in this second second series season. But but yeah, I'm more curious about Shiro, how he has to fight this boss by himself. Like, in my opinion, like, raid bosses are usually, usually 10 or, or 20 levels higher than you. So it's like, what yeah. are you going to do against this? Or is it just going to be like a, a mind game where you trick the Kuni clan guy to, you know, letting it go or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one more thing of uh, of bonus to talk about in the episode is Tetra telling Natsuki she's going to join Log Horizon and that she already said it was okay. Yeah, and he's just like, oh, oh boy, this is going to be, like, <laughs> you know, when, when Mary Ellen and Hera meet. That's, again, I'm still curious how that's going to go down. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be some, some tension. Some sparks flying or something, I don't know. Yeah, she's just going to... Tetra's just going to be on her back the whole time, and Marielle's going to have this kind of awkward look, like, eh, I don't like this. <laughs> that's my guy. Right, maybe the... Uh, maybe she might be the annoying, like, pet of the group that's just everywhere on everyone, and it's like, hey, you need to calm down. Mm-hmm. But I did hear there's some... Not really. I didn't really need spoilers for her, but I keep hearing that Tetra. Something about her is something special that yeah, we really I'm... revealed later on. But mm-hmm. but it's like as far as you know, special things in Lock Rising goes. Like she can really only be one of two things. You know, an NPC that's just like uh, the other kid who's you know now he's a player now. So it, it can be that, or you know, something maybe a GM that is playing the game that she's stuck in the game now, or something like that. There's not there's not mm-hmm. much they can do with that in my opinion, but who knows? Maybe there might be something different. Yeah, or just something about w- what kind of person she is right. in real life. Yeah, I'm guessing like we so. Don't, Maybe she's a celebrity. We've been yeah, we've been seeing some some real life 
characters in the series so far. Maybe Tetra will, is due for that. Right. Yeah. Um. So we're we're we we still got some rating left to do. But what do you think about these two episodes? Uh, the first episode, you know, with with William giving his speech was kind of cool. Just you know, he's motivating everybody. It was pretty funny, and at the same time, you know, kind of motivating himself. I mean, there was little shots of like like a ghost version of himself kind of talking to him. And, you know, he's saying something about, we should do, we're gamers and all this, and he's talking about, to himself was interesting, it was kind of good. But overall, that episode was kind of like, eh, can we get to it, get to the <laughs> get to the fighting again? But, but yeah, episode 12 definitely, you know, brought that in with the, all the fighting they're doing now. Getting ready to, you know, finish these raids off, and like I said, they maybe they finish these raids and come back to the other group, and that's kind of what I'm missing. Missing Shiro, mm-hmm. Shiro with uh, Akatsuki and, you know, Natsuku with Muriel. Just these uh, pairings that we've, you know, gotten so used to. I don't kind of want to see them again. You know, in season one, I, I think a lot of people looked at Law Horizon as it's more of a, a talking type show than it is an action type show. And I think what we've seen with these raids in season two, you know, we're getting some action here. We're getting some some good quality. Uh, you know, maybe it could be a little better. Maybe it could be. Uh, I shouldn't say better. Maybe they may, maybe they could focus more on the actual tactics of the battle and the fighting. And we, we've seen as much character development in these past two episodes as we have action. But it, it's fun to see when Log Horizon is, you know, busting out all this terminology and stuff about DPS and area of effect and you know, Shire organizing the the raid groups and the healers and stuff and you know seeing like now to use the castle of stone which is a pretty cool looking effect that kind of uh pulls aggro on the uh on the bosses mm-hmm. it, it's really fun yeah that could probably just too like you said doing the all the you know in-game you know i guess talking it's kind of nice and a lot of you know raiding in general is even before you raid there's you know it's planning there's there's strategy involved so it's mm-hmm. not just like I said. You don't run in guns blazing. You have to, you know, stop and talk to people. And so, but yeah. But so as far as William, I'm, I'm cool. It's cool seeing him step up and talk. But yeah, I want to see Shiro fight this raid boss. I'm curious how it's gonna go down. Yep, it should be fun. So, uh, and we'll talk about that soon on the uh, the next episode of uh, the Log Horizon Mini Talk. So, this has been our discussion for episodes ten and eleven. Uh, For Fosh, I'm Jero. Thank you for listening. We will see you next time in the database.